Okay guys, and uh, I'm back and uh, in the world of cell phones and wireless devices, we're starting to accumulate a lot of these little things, these Bluetooth headsets. This is one that I have that I don't have a cradle for. It is a Motorola headset. And I'm gonna go into it, get rid of that thing. Actually, I can keep that. It probably fit on another uh, headset. <coughs> The way these work is uh, a PAN network, a personal area network, of about 20 feet or 50 feet or something like that. There's the power switch up here at the top. Your volume up and down, and of course your answer button in the front right here. I'm not a big fan of these, though I have a bunch of them, and I only use them in certain... Uh, situations um we tear into it and i already tell you what's in here there's gonna be a lithium ion lithium lipo lithium polymer battery in this pack not sure of the voltage probably about 3.7 volts or so um there'll also be some charging circuits some leds a speaker and a microphone and there'll also be the bluetooth transceiver which you know how Bluetooth works. You, with a lot of these, you mash and hold the button down, and the phone sees it, and you sync it up with your uh, phone, and it sends the the bits across. I don't know the exact science and what all sent across, so I don't really care either. I know it's an authentication. It's very similar to how Wi-Fi networks work with WPA and and whatnot. So. Be using a knife to kind of get in there and wrench this up. You know, I've taken these types of things apart, and I'm probably going to slice my finger in the process. But so it's for science, right? This looks like it's just held in. I expect Motorola would have some other type of proprietary. Okay, it's oh. It's trying to come apart. You can see there's the battery pack. Right there. Let's see if I can't pop it on a loose. To liberate this battery. Now this battery does charge. I actually charged this in a non-standard way. And the battery does charge. The problem I'm having is getting the hind end out which you know, just the front come off uh, maybe it does oh this is interesting yeah this is cool you can just pull the front off sticky there's your Bluetooth antenna right there that little piece of brass there's another part, a shield for the transmitter. It's got a 9 written on it. I wonder if it's uh, Bluetooth channel 9, maybe. But this is on. Motorola has a bunch of interesting things. Uh, probably, yeah. Let's just break it off. <laughs> well, there goes the uh, that part. I don't think that was the, the LiPo. No, that was something else. Here's the battery leads right there. It must have been the microphone lead I broke. Huh. Let's see, we'll liberate the battery out of this. Like so. Probably shouldn't cut them like that. This battery shouldn't. It's got a little charge left on it. Um, if you're into drones and model planes, this is what you want to put in there. They're very lightweight. There's no weight on that at all. Um, let's get rid of this. This is your speaker and microphone board. Yeah, that was the, uh, no, wait, what is that? That was, that was the charge, wait, oh, the charging contact is what that was. Let's see, can I get under this? 
there are virtually no screws in this thing at all. It's all hot, snotted, and sticky taped in. Yeah, yeah that's the chart. Oh, God, that's sticky. It's a pretty robust circuit board there, but there's the charging uh, pads. Yeah, that's what I broke off, the charging pads. It's weird that it would go there, and then there's the speaker headphone lead. That. And here's the business end. I'm only going to assume that somehow this has got to pop out. Probably towards the front. That would make sense, right? If Motorola is doing anything industry standards like their phones, yes, it's got a plastic uh, like collar around it right here. Um, this was real big in the Nokia 5000 series phones, these collars like this. And let's just pull all that out. It's not going to let me have it with that antenna there, is it? I'm trying to work around it without breaking it, but it's inevitable it's going to break. Okay, there's the circuits and power switch. Oh, okay, have our little volume. Uh, push buttons here this is a RF shield for this Bluetooth chip I think my eyes aren't completely bad yet I can actually read that <laughs> on that chip it's a CST chip 41C671AU K 805 RD that's the chip number, this big uh, package here. I'm just going to assume that that's the Bluetooth chip, the actual, what does all the Bluetoothy magic. On the back here is your power on switch. Looks like you're charging circuits and audio amplification stuff in here. Now this would still work if I actually had a need for it, but I don't think I have a, a direct need for it. Um, I did at one point make some stereo headphones out of some of, the, one of these, but, you know, Bluetooth now is a dime a dozen, basically. It's not like it was five years ago when it was so expensive. Here's your connect button. The one thing that I am interested in greatly is this little switch right here. If I can desolder that intact, I can use that switch. Excuse me, man. I can use this switch on my FTDI uh, interface to switch between five and three volts on the VCC. And if this thing is will remain intact, if I can desolder it in one piece. If not, oh well. It'd be nice, you know, to have a switchable uh, deal on that thing. Let's see. Oh, oh, that came off. Kind of easy. Oh, it's just glue. Uh, go on and take that off. So I'm not going to use this board. Um, I thought there were LEDs on this board. I don't see them though. Hmm. Maybe they were on this side. No. I could have sworn there was a charging LED. There's a the little light fuse right there. Oh, tiny fuse. Oh, here's our microphone. Under here will be a microphone. Should be. World's smallest microphone. Look at this. And that is a three pin microphone, which is. I wonder. Hold on. Is that trace even? I wonder if this is a phantom powered microphone, a condenser mic, like type of mic. Normally condensers take 48 volts, but it's not unheard of. I mean, I've heard of them taking the less for applications of remotes and things, but hmm. That is a tiny, tiny, 
tiny microphone. Huh. Uh, yeah, little kinds of little numbers here. T. Part of the RF transistor, power transistor there. There's, like I said, the processor and the clock oscillator for that. There's the antenna. The thing I was trying to tell people about without these antennas that are built in and people with Wi-Fi things like my uh, ESP boards and things, well, external antennas, it's always best to get one of the external option on it. But if you look at these things, follow the antenna trace, there's a little tiny capacitor right there, and that's a, the coupling capacitor. This capacitor keeps this antenna coupled right here and the process of that you know ham operators would know this that use balance and capacitors to couple and decouple you couple with a capacitor and use a coil ballon to decouple now coupling will then turn this entire trace plus this loop past this capacitor whole trace plus the loop into an antenna which would probably equal up to about the right length for the middle of the band that this transmits in and this keeps the bswr low so you get the maximum amount of distance possible with the power these things only have about 10 milliwatts or so and it's being driven looks like straight off of the chip um you've got you know i don't see yeah it's being driven straight off the chip and you got the coupling and the you know, things here if it was an external antenna, your decoupling would be at the antenna. That way it only uses the antenna and it decouples the coax line from the radiating uh, equation. Makes sense. Does to me, my work on radio equipment. So, But yeah, you got all the transistors, gates, little small things. There's the LEDs right there. The LEDs are right there at the tip of my knife. It's a dual LED, probably a blue and a red. There's no way I can desolder that, besides I don't have any use for that. But um, uh, I have an impressive pile that I have here. But this is what I'm interested in. Under here, it says it's got a Motorola sticker on it, which is interesting if it doesn't have a voltage i can always look up the motorola part number on our website bluetooth headset it tells you what kind of headset it was interesting enough it was a Har harmona h680 hmm. motorola harmona well let's see what this must be all the certifications on this little sticker here. This device. Yep. FCC ID. So the Bluetooth headset was uh, type accepted. It does have an FCC ID. Serial number, model number, made in China. I'm going to assume this is about 3.7 volts. It's a LiPo cell pack. Um, it's got its little circuit board right there to protect it, so it's all there. Yeah, I'll be using that in something. Arduino, I think. Um, break all this into the bin, I think. And I have another piece here. This is broken, does not work, has the same type of battery, but I, I'm interested in that. I tend to keep these things. This is some kind of proprietary connector. It's not a micro or mini. It's it's only for this Kobe. Oh, over foot. MP five five zero one G. It's a one gigabyte MP three player that it's got a little joystick on it here that doesn't not work anymore. Um, let's see, do I have my pliers handy? Probably not. Some here. Pull this pin. Pull the pin. That's how you take belt clips off. Pull the pin, pull the springs, pull it right up. 
that may be usable later for something else. I'm not sure. And it's got a little tiny, tiny screw. I happen to have a little tiny screwdriver. <laughs> Get that open. Maybe it'll just fall to pieces. Kobe is not one of the best for audio equipment. They sell mostly to institutions and dollar stores and prisons, things, hospitals, things like that. It's got a QC1 pass sticker on it. And institutions, you know, they, this is their big market, I guess. Um, let's see if we can't pop this open. The LiPo batteries, man, that's, you know, if you want lightweight and a little bit of, you know, some power, and you have lightweight like a drone, LiPo is where you want to be. And here's one here. Yeah, 3.7 volts, 80 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt LiPo that will be liberated from this. Oh, look, this is on its own board. <coughs> There's another one of those micro switches. Here's the hold button. Well, joystick, all that is, is a multi. It's like a miniature D pad, and I'll actually be keeping this. Because I could do something with this, actually, if I could even get it off the board without destroying it. Um, let's get this off. Does this come unplugged? Or is it? No, it's a screw. There's a little tiny, another little tiny screw. Little watch screws is what I call them. Self-tapping type things. And standard headphone jack on its own board with a mount. Liberate that for sure. Put that over there in the save pile. Now, what have we got here? Oh, we got a battery. I want to get the battery off before I proceed any further, right? I could fire up the soldering iron for this, but you know, there's the lipo. It's really thin. GSP. 031525 80 milliamp hour 3.7 volts yeah it's also got its little board there it is you can see that there you look at it so this little board of leads what I'll do is take this tape off and put new leads on with a little watt iron there over there and uh this is the play and shuffle button. There's another one of those switches. There's that proprietary USB connect connector. There's the power LED down here at the bottom. Right there. I'm trying to stay on the camera, sorry. Um, if you've ever been in one of these, you know what you're looking at. Of course, Look at this. This is your one gigabyte flash RAM. This big chip here. You typically, you'll find things like this in flash drives. Um, you'll find a smaller chip. This chip is the processing chip. It's got big capacitors here to filter off of that drop. Okay, anyway. It's got an ALI chip in it. An M5667 blank A1. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's doing all the audio processing and, and file processing, USB drivers, all of that, all in one. And there's the clock oscillator for that processor right there. There's 12 megahertz. I can see that. You probably can't, but I can. Of course, the flash RAM. I'm kind of curious if there's still stuff on this. Can I plug this in? I mean, I haven't butchered it too bad. I might be able to plug it into the computer and get something on it. <laughs> that would be interesting. H Y N I X. 
No, I'm not sure that is. But I know it's a gigabyte because it's what it says on the case. And <laughs> yeah, and various little microscopic bits and pieces there. It's an interesting little button. But yeah, it doesn't work though. That's the thing. Now. That's a gigabyte. I could heat this up and get it off of here in one piece, I think, if they didn't glue it to the board. I could run it through hot air and get it, but I don't know if it's even worth it. Doesn't appear to be glued, it's just soldered on. I don't think it'd even be worth it to try, though. Yeah, who knows. So this is what I'm after. LiPo batteries. These little gems. Good for powering things. And, uh, you know, if you're into drones or spy bugs or, or whatever, things you don't want a lot of weight on and you need about three to four volts, about three volts or so, three and a half volts. And this is what you want. You know how to hook up batteries and you know you can put them <coughs> parallel to each other and get 3.7 volts and twice the amps or you put them in series and get the same amount of amps and twice the voltage so in this my case I would be stacking them like this and they don't they, they weigh nothing and I'm seriously I mean that they weigh nothing and connecting them in parallel with each other to get more than 80 amp hours 80 milliamp hours excuse me 80 milliamp hours isn't much though hmm but I don't think anything I use uses quite that much either anyway that's enough of this me rambling on about lipos and taking things apart that cost me too much money in the past and I'll leave you guys with it.